9. Torpedy Down Here Located off the coast of northern Poland in the Baltic Sea's Bay of Puck, near the port city of Gdynia, Torpedownia is an abandoned torpedo testing and launch station that the Germans built during World War II. The imposing structure was only used for its intended purpose for three years, from 1942 to 1945. Germany was split up between the US, Britain, and the Soviet Union per the Potsdam Agreement when the war ended. Torpedownia was given back to Poland, which fell under Soviet authority at the time. The Soviets used the site as a military dive training facility for a short time, but they eventually abandoned it and it fell into disrepair. A long wooden pier that connected the complex to the shore was blown up to discourage urban explorers from trying to reach the decrepit, crumbling structure. Parts of Torbidonia have fallen into the sea, and by all appearances, it seems like it's on the verge of collapsing. Nobody oversees the site, so it is accessible to visitors, but the building is unstable, and explorers are advised to proceed with utmost caution. 8. RAF Wendling Built in Norfolk, England in 1942, RAF Wendling was a Royal Air Force military base that also housed members of the United States Army Air Force. During World War II, it functioned primarily as a bomber airfield. Around 2,800 soldiers lived at the base, transforming the everyday lives of the 400 residents who lived in the nearby quiet village of Beeston. In 1945, the Americans handed the base back over to the RAF, who used it as a maintenance airfield until 1961. Three years later, the military began selling off parts of the property and its disused buildings, some of which are still there. While many of them have been repurposed, some are still filled with old furniture and debris, including living quarters, shower buildings, restrooms, and more. Today, the former airfield is a turkey farm, which has large coops lining the old runways. The former operations center is now a John Deere dealership, where the original building that housed the briefing room still stands today. A used car part shop now occupies the former mess hall and recreation center, where soldiers once went to eat and visited the cinema. Another sports and recreation site has become a fruit canning plant. 7. The Wolf's Lair Wolfschnatzer, or the Wolf's Lair, was one of Adolf Hitler's many top-secret headquarters located near the Eastern Front. It was built in the Masurian woods of what is now Ketrezin, Poland, starting in 1941. Built by thousands of forced laborers, who were sadly sent to their deaths within six months of arriving at the site, ensuring that they took any knowledge of it to the grave. The war dragged on longer than Hitler thought it would, and he spent more time at Wolf's Lair than he originally planned, leading him to order extensive upgrades that were never finished. The complex grew to include 80 buildings, many of which were camouflaged with flat roofs and fake greenery. Wild guidebooks estimate that there were somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 employees working at the clandestine facility at any given time. Modern estimates put that number as high as 50,000. The site was of great strategic importance. Besides being situated deep in the forest, it was near a collection of lakes that acted as a natural barrier to ground troops and was only accessible via a small airstrip and a single railway. Hitler spent over 800 days at the Wolf's Lair between June 1941 and November 1944. It's here that the failed attempt on his life, known as Operation Valkyrie, took place. As the Red Army advanced on the site a few months later, Hitler fled. The Soviets received orders to blow up the complex and acted accordingly, but many buildings were left partially standing. The site fell further into decay under the communist Polish government over the following decades. It's become a tourist site since the fall of communism during the 1990s. In recent years, there's been talk about possibly restoring the wolf's lair, but many fear it would turn into a neo-Nazi pilgrimage site rather than teach important lessons about not letting history repeat itself. 6. Bluey East 2 In 1941, the US and Denmark made an agreement for the American military to protect Greenland. The Army Air Force established a base on the island of Ikatek in eastern Greenland, which urgently needed airfields at the time. Known as Bluey East II, it was one of 30 American bases that were established throughout Greenland during World War II and the Cold War. They've all since been abandoned, and it would be an understatement to say that the US left behind a lot of messes. Bluey East II closed in 1947 after operating for just five years. Today, it's littered with asbestos-infested buildings, rusting vehicles, and as many as 200,000 corroding aviation fuel barrels, many of which are still full. 
Rumors claim that there are also hundreds of cases of unexploded dynamite. Greenland didn't gain any of its own decision-making power until 1979, so it had no say in the establishment of American bases during previous years. Citizens, who rely mostly on fishing and hunting for their food, have been left feeling concerned and disgusted about the environmental hazards of Bluey East 2 and other abandoned bases. After visiting Bluey East 2 in 2014, American photographer Ken Bauer petitioned the American government to clean up the site. It received 36,000 signatures, failing to meet the minimum of 100,000 signatures that are required for a petition to reach the White House. A clause in the original agreement with Denmark exempted the US from any responsibility for cleaning up anything it left behind. In 2017, the Danish government agreed to pay Greenland $23 million to clean up Blue East 2, and the project began in 2019. While it's a step in the right direction, it'll still be several years before the site is fully cleaned, because the work can only happen during the summer months. Do you think the US should help clean up the mess, or should Denmark and Greenland foot the bill? Let us know in the comments, and be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. 5. Forgotten Ghost Ships Following seismic activity from an underwater volcano last year, two dozen World War II-era ships surfaced 800 miles off the Japanese coast near the island of Iwo Jima. The volcano, known as Fukutoku Okonaba, had been erupting continuously starting in August, causing the seabed to rise and raising the ships into view. Iwo Jima is part of the earthquake and eruption-prone Bonin Islands. The ships that turned up near its coast last year are the remnants of Japanese transport vessels that the American military sank in 1945 during the Battle of Iwo Jima. It was one of the war's bloodiest conflicts, and it raged on for 36 days. 70,000 US Marines went up against a 20,000-strong Japanese force, killing or taking prisoners all but 216 Japanese soldiers. Nearly 7,000 Americans were killed, and another 20,000 were wounded. There was no port at Iwo Jima, so the Marines scuttled the enemy ships parallel to the island shore to create a breakwater. Now that the vessels have reappeared, they'll probably stay put for a while. As live science writer Ben Turner pointed out, Iwo Jima is littered with unexploded bombs and grenades. Nobody lives there, and civilians rarely, if ever, visit. For safety's sake, the Japanese government will probably leave the ships in place rather than remove or scrap them. 4. Galapagos Base The US military began eyeing the Galapagos Islands as a desirable place for a base as far back as 1911, but the Ecuadorian government was unwilling to lease the islands. After the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, then-President Roosevelt visited Ecuador, and the two countries reached an agreement that allowed for an American military base in the Galapagos. Construction on the base, known as The Rock, began in 1942 on the small island of Boltra, quadrupling its population within a year. Over 3,000 servicemen and workers lived throughout the base's 200 buildings, which included a movie theater, a church, a bowling alley, and a beer garden. There was also an airport with three runways. Military members were free to explore the island in their free time and could even take college courses. But life at the rock was unpleasant for many soldiers and marines who struggled to cope with the heat and remoteness. To prevent their morale from plummeting, tours at the base were limited to six months. The forces at Boltra never saw combat, and the base was turned back over to the Ecuadorian government in 1946. Locals dismantled most of the buildings and kept the airport, which is still used today. But the foundations of the disused buildings are occasionally seen on the island, and other remnants of the former military presence can be seen at the sites of former outposts on surrounding islands. For example, in 2010, fishermen found a cache of bombs on Bartholomew Island, where soldiers performed target practice and other exercises. In San Cristobal, there are anti-aircraft cannons that can still be seen today, and there are old supply barges in the waters off Santa Cruz. 3. Berlin Olympic Village Shortly before the Nazi Party's rise to power, Germany won a bid to host the 1936 Summer Olympics. Seeing the event as an opportunity to spread propaganda, Adolf Hitler oversaw the construction of a luxurious village in Wustermark, just outside Berlin. It provided around 4,000 athletes with unusually upscale accommodations, 
including top-of-the-line training facilities, living quarters, dining areas, and a swimming pool. Hitler commissioned the site's design based on his vision of a village of peace. Yet, he intended to eventually use it for the German army during his ruthless conquest to dominate humanity. And that's exactly what he did. Throughout World War II, the site functioned as a training academy and hospital. The Soviet army took over the base in 1945 and remained there for nearly 50 years until the early 90s, when the fall of communism prompted the site's abandonment. The site fell into ruins, going largely unnoticed or perhaps ignored by the populace and attracting more handfuls of tourists every year. As of 2019, plans were underway to convert some of the buildings into apartments and townhouses to accommodate Berlin's burgeoning population. 2. Sasebo Naval Base during an air raid against Japan in 1945, American fighters pelted an air defense base at Sasebo on the southern island of Kyushu. While most of the ground-level installations were demolished, one underground facility remained largely intact. U.S. troops later found the sprawling tunnel complex, which was built with concrete walls several feet thick and strong blast doors. They burned the interior to render it unusable and left it behind. Today, the structure still stands as an eerie, empty shell, with blackened walls that appear to have been barely touched ever since the Americans torched it. Despite the fire damage, what's left of it remains remarkably intact, offering a rare glimpse into some of Japan's day-to-day -day operations during World War II, when it was still operational. The tunnels connect to various sites throughout the city, including modern-day American and Japanese military bases and a nearby park. Some of them are flooded and therefore closed to the public, but the Japanese military sometimes allows visitors to tour the accessible parts of the complex. When it was still operational, every room in the site was air-conditioned, and the rusting remnants of the system can still be seen today. Inside the main room, there was a large map that was used for commanding operations. The room next door contained phone lines to other air bases. Anyone who gets an opportunity to explore the site must do so using a flashlight. It shows obvious signs of age, including crumbling floors and loose tiles. The restrooms are partially caved in, but still contain the old facilities, including a separate private lavatory for the office. There's also an old, dust-covered sign left behind by American forces, labeling the facility as off-limits. 1. Churchill's Bunker It's long been customary for world leaders to flee from epicenters of warfare, but Winston Churchill secretly remained stationed beneath the streets of London during World War II. When things got dangerous, he and his top advisors retreated to a collection of dark, dank rooms that were formerly used by civil servants to store furniture. From there, Churchill and his senior commanders plotted the British military's next moves and communicated with Allied forces. Known as the War Rooms, these spaces were equipped with the latest technology and were highly reinforced to protect those inside. For six years, they functioned as the nerve center of the British war effort. From there, Churchill made many radio broadcasts, including three key war speeches, during which he encouraged the nation not to let the war break their spirits. Certain aspects of the war room were kept secret, even from the staff. For example, when Churchill had telephone conversations with US President Franklin D. Roosevelt prior to D-Day, the staff were under the impression that he was using the bathroom. The war room was staffed with hundreds of employees. According to the historical narrative, they approached the war with enthusiasm despite their less-than-ideal living conditions. Churchill directed the war from the bunker's cabinet room, which has some of history's most tense moments frozen in time. On the left arm of the chair Churchill sat in, there are scratch marks from his fingernails clawing at the wood. On the right arm, there are indentations from the ring he was wearing caused by him slamming his hand down in anger. The telephones of the map room were manned 24-7, and the room featured a giant map that was used for plotting British convoys all around the world. Sugar cubes left behind by Wing Commander John Hegarty that were discovered in the early 80s now sit on display in the room. The original kitchen facilities are also intact and contain some of the original pots and pans that were used by Churchill's cook, Georgina Landemare. Visitors can also see Churchill's bedroom, one of the soundless typewriters that the staff used inside the war rooms, and other artifacts left behind from wartime. Number 9. Herm 36
During the Soviet era, millions of people were imprisoned in a network of forced labor camps known as the Gulag. The system peaked during Joseph Stalin's rule between the 1930s and 50s and was a key tool for punishing political dissenters along with petty criminals and career convicts. Some of the roughly 18 million people who spent time at gulags were sent to Perm 36 near the rural village of Cucino. Built in 1946, this so-called reformatory camp originally functioned as a timber production facility. In 1972, it became the primary camp for political prisoners. This included anyone who harbored anti-communist sentiments or spoke out against the USSR, people that Stalin considered the most dangerous. Perm 36 became notorious for the harsh treatment of its prisoners, earning it a reputation as the country's worst political prison. It was customary within the gulag system to impose the harshest work and the strictest confinement on political prisoners. For example, after Perm 36 was converted into a political camp, inmates were kept in closed cells 24-7. The prison closed in 1987, making it one of the last Soviet prisons to house political dissidents. It's also one of the few former gulags that are still standing after most were destroyed by the time the Soviet Union fell. The buildings at Perm 36 were preserved in 1994 as a disturbing reminder of the terror that the communist regime imposed on anyone who dared to speak against it. From 1995 to 2014, the former prison operated as a museum dedicated to the history of political repression. It was forced to close after losing funding from the local administration amid allegations that the museum exaggerated the brutality of what went on there. In 2015, officials removed all negative references to Stalin from the museum. Today, the property sits in disrepair and in urgent need of restoration to prevent the buildings from deteriorating past the point of saving. Was Stalin worse than Hitler? Number 8. 1992 World Expo Remains Nearly 42 million people visited La Isla de la Cartuja, or Charter House Island in Seville, Spain over six months during the 1992 World Expo. Over 531 acres were used for the event, which commemorated the 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's departure from the port at Seville. It took several days to tour the massive site, which featured pavilions and exhibits dedicated to the event's Age of Discovery theme. After the expo ended, its monorail track was removed and many of the pavilions were demolished. The property still contains some aging remnants of the event, including the monorail and cable car stations, exhibits, a sphere, replicas of a space rocket, and a satellite. It also has other decorative features that are deteriorating and reclaimed by nature. The eerily quiet streets still feature the expo seal. Parts of the site have been repurposed into a modern amusement park and a research facility, which starkly contrast their post-apocalyptic surroundings. The vast, primarily disused parking lot serves as a reminder of the bustling crowds that once flocked to the site. Although the expo drew massive crowds, it did little to benefit Seville, leaving the city with decades of debt and a sprawling, disused site filled with decaying structures. Number 7. Okobira Hotel The Okobira Hotel in Ebino City, Japan hasn't operated in decades. As a result, it's become a dilapidated eyesore and rumors claim it's haunted. In 2020, men in their 20s entered the abandoned hotel, perhaps to stave off pandemic boredom. They went up to the sixth floor and were shocked to find a decaying corpse laying face up in bed. Unfortunately, the remains were too decomposed for police to make any immediate determinations about the person's approximate age or gender. The body was later identified as a local resident who was in his 50s when he died. It's apparently common for abandoned buildings to stand for years or decades in Japan. So, last year, a reporter for the Mainichi set out to learn why so many structures stand neglected after closing their doors. Residents told the journalist that people had been trespassing into the Okobira Hotel for years and that they wanted to see it torn down. But the company that owned the building was dissolved and the local government hesitated to get too involved so they wouldn't be responsible for the decaying building. Demolishing it would be a risky move because it would be difficult, time-consuming, and costly to go after the owner for the costs. In the end, taxpayers could end up footing the bill. In the meantime, the hotel is visibly falling apart and has become dangerous to enter as it remains stuck in a legal limbo that keeps it standing for now. Number 6. Lake Shawnee Amusement Park The Lake Shawnee Amusement Park in Princeton, West Virginia operated for 40 years from 1926 to 1966. It was popular among locals from coal mining families. It had a Ferris wheel, swing ride, dance hall, racetrack, swimming pool, concession stands, and overnight cabins. Over the years, six people died at the park. A young girl lost her life in the 1950s when a delivery truck backed up into the swing ride while she was on it. 
In another tragedy, a nine-year-old boy drowned in the swimming pool after his mother left him unattended and his arm was sucked into a drain. The pool was subsequently closed and filled in with sand to prevent any more deaths. But the site's disturbing connection with death dates back long before it became an amusement park. During the mid-18th century, two local families became embroiled in a heated land dispute that eventually led to a massacre at the property. The park was briefly reopened in the late 1980s, but was soon shut down amid suspicions of a Native American burial ground being on the site. Archaeologists uncovered the skeletal remains of 13 people predating the arrival of European settlers. Today, the long-neglected property is a popular destination for urban and paranormal explorers who are eager to investigate rumors about the former park being haunted. They want to catch a glimpse of its deteriorating rides and attractions, which were never dismantled. What's the worst amusement park you've ever been to? Tell us about it in the comments down below and be sure to hit the subscribe button for more great videos. Number 5. Citadel La Ferrière Near Haiti's northern coast atop a mountain called Bonnet l'Evêque, Citadel La Ferrière is an early 19th century fortress built under King Henry Christophe. He was one of the most important leaders of the country's slave revolution. Built by 20,000 formerly enslaved people over 15 years, it stood as a symbol of newfound power and independence. Designed to provide living quarters, storage space, and cisterns for 5,000 defenders for up to a year, Citadel La Ferrière is the largest fortress in the Americas. Its prime location was strategically chosen to make it difficult for enemies to attack. The building was designed with the same concept in mind. It has steep sides that drop off directly into the mountainside and a triangular front wall that juts out toward the road, limiting the view of the structure's profile. The fortress was built to defend Haiti against a return of French forces, but this never happened and its 365 cannons were never used. Today, Citadel La Ferrière is a historical monument and tourist attraction famous for its breathtaking views of the surrounding landscape and coast below. But some visitors have reported feeling spooky vibes as if it might be haunted, leading one person to describe the fortress as one of the most awe-inspiring yet creepy places I've ever been. Number 4. Eastern State Penitentiary In Philadelphia, the abandoned Eastern State Penitentiary is considered by some to be the most haunted correctional facility in the U.S. During its operating years from 1829 to 1971, it housed some of history's most notorious criminals, including Al Capone and bank robber Willie Sutton. The prison was famous for its heavy use of solitary confinement and appalling mistreatment. In addition, inmates endured unimaginably harsh punishments, including the so-called water bath, which involved being submerged in water and left in the frigid winter cold until ice formed on the person's body. Prisoners were tightly bound to a device called the mad chair, cutting off their circulation and damaging their limbs, often to the point that they required amputation. In what's known as the iron gag, an inmate's hands were tied behind their back while they were forced to wear an iron collar that tore at their tongue and mouth and caused them to bleed profusely if they tried to move. Perhaps the most torturous punishment at Eastern State Penitentiary was a pitch-dark underground cell called the Hole. It took sensory deprivation and solitary confinement to a whole new level, depriving prisoners entirely of human contact and the most basic amenities. There was no toilet, and the cell's occupants received very little food while they languished in the dark, losing their sense of time and their grip on reality. The prison scaled back on solitary confinement in 1913 because of overcrowding and ultimately closed in 1971. Ever since then, it's been a popular attraction among history and paranormal enthusiasts. Stories of hauntings date back to the 1940s and bear eerie similarities, with certain parts of the prison being known for specific supernatural activities. In cell block 12, for example, visitors, staff, and inmates have all reported hearing echoing voices and laughing, while ghostly faces are known to grace the halls of cell block 4. As Ben Bookman told National Public Radio, tour guides are not so quick to label the site as haunted. He explained they don't want to exploit the prison's dark image and pointed out that the prisoners who suffered there were real people and that it's important not to make fun or glorify their experiences. Number 3. Hotel de Salto the Hotel del Salto was built in 1923 as an upscale resident for architect Carlos Artura Tapias in San Antonio del Tequendama, Colombia. Also called the Mansion of Tequendama Falls, it sat perched on a steep cliff overlooking the breathtaking nearby waterfalls that the area is known for. The mansion featured tall windows and other luxurious aspects of French architecture that were popular among society's upper crust at the time. It became a hotel for wealthy travelers in 1928 and remained in business until the early 90s when it was abandoned because of contamination of the nearby Bogota River. Plans to build an 18-story structure in its place never came to fruition, and over the following years the building fell into disrepair. 
After the hotel closed, the property gained notoriety for the alleged string of suicides that happened there, leading to rumors that it was haunted. But the site was no stranger to death by the time the suicides started happening. Local legend holds that the indigenous Muisca people jumped from the top of the 515-foot Tecandama Falls while fleeing Spanish conquistadors, and that those who made the leap turned into eagles during the descent and flew to freedom. Some believe that the story may have inspired some of the people who took their own lives to do so at Tecandama Falls. In 2013, the building was renovated and reopened as a science museum by ecologists from the National University of Columbia's Institute of Natural Science. Number 2. Raynham Hall in Norfolk, England, there's a 400-year-old country house where the ghost of someone known as the Brown Lady is rumored to wander the halls. Known as Raynham Hall, it was built over 15 years, starting in 1622. Its most famous resident was a prominent early 18th-century statesman named Charles Townsend. He married Lady Dorothy Walpole, the sister of Britain's first Prime Minister, Robert Walpole. Legend has it that Townsend, who was known for his volatile temper, caught Dorothy cheating on him with an English nobleman named Lord Wharton. To keep his wife from continuing the affair, Townsend is said to have locked her in various rooms throughout Raynham Hall, where she remained trapped until her death from smallpox in 1726. The first reported sighting of her ghost, nicknamed the Brown Lady, came in 1835 during the Christmas festivities at Raynham Hall. Two visitors claimed to have seen her lurking in her old-fashioned dress as they approached their rooms. Another noteworthy sighting happened the following year when a paranormal skeptic named Captain Frederick Marriott asked to stay in the haunted room to prove that local smugglers were behind the strange activity at the property. Much to Marriott's surprise, the brown lady approached him with a lantern in hand and a malicious grin on her face. Then, right as he was about to pull the trigger on his pistol, she vanished. In 1936, Country Life magazine claimed to have captured a photograph of the brown lady. It became one of the most famous alleged ghost photos of all time. Many visitors have claimed to see the brown lady in the years since, while others still believe the supernatural presence is a fabricated tourist trap. What do you think? Number 1. Sensaba Tunnel Tucked into the Tennessee wilderness along narrow, winding roads outside the city of Kingsport, a disused, graffiti-covered tunnel sits on what was once a hill. Known as the Sensaba Tunnel, it was built during the 1920s when the hill was blasted apart to make way for a bend in the road. The tunnel was paved so that traffic could pass through it and supported the railroad tracks that ran above it. It was built on land purchased from a local family called the Sensabaws, who lived in a nearby house and helped with the construction. During the 1960s, stories began to spread about the tunnel allegedly being haunted, and they continue to this day. At first, teenagers who hung out near its entrance reported hearing eerie noises, such as screaming and crying coming from within the structure. Not long after that, rumors circulated about a vagrant stealing a baby from the Sensabaugh home. Another story claimed that Ed Sensabaugh, the head of the household, went crazy and murdered his family inside the tunnel. A woman supposedly disappeared one night after her car broke down near the tunnel and she went to the Sensabaugh home seeking help. Supposedly, if someone shuts their engine off inside the tunnel, they'll hear the shrieking laughter and terrifying cries, and they may even catch a glimpse of a tall, dark figure with red eyes. Some even claim to have found tiny handprints on the outside of their car after having driven through the tunnel. No records exist of any murders occurring within the tunnel or the abandoned Sensabaugh home, which still stands nearby. It remains a hot spot among paranormal enthusiasts hoping to experience a terrifying supernatural encounter. Number 9. Chernobyl Reactor Number 4 Room Located in northern Ukraine, Pripyat was founded in 1970 as a closed-off city that existed solely to serve the nearby Chernobyl nuclear plant. Unfortunately, things went terribly wrong on April 26, 1986. That's when the plant's number 4 reactor malfunctioned, triggering history's worst-ever nuclear disaster. Two staff members who operated the reactor instantly died and 134 others were hospitalized shortly after that. Radiation equaling 500 Hiroshima bombs spewed into the air. Nearly 50,000 residents were evacuated from Pripyat, leaving the area virtually abandoned except for personnel who were tasked with the dangerous job of cleaning the mess up. The city's deserted buildings have been a popular attraction for quite some time, offering visitors a first-hand glimpse at a place left frozen in time. The Chernobyl plant has been less accessible to tourists in the past, but that's slowly changing. In late 2019, the control room for nuclear reactor 4, the one that exploded, opened to the public for the first time. The visitors could only gain entry by a guided tour and were required to wear a hazmat suit, a respirator, and a protective helmet. 
They also had to submit to radiation tests upon entering and leaving and could only stay in the control room for a few minutes. This was because the radiation levels remain dangerous to this day. It's unclear whether the tours are still running amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Is this a tour you'd like to take? Number 8. Paderai Prison Near the old town of Tallinn along Estonia's northern coast, there's an abandoned jail known as Paderai Prison. It was initially built as a sea fortress around 1840 and began functioning as a prison during World War II. The Soviets used the site as a high-security lockup from 1944 to 1991, during which time it earned a reputation as one of the country's most terrifying prisons. At any given time, there were hundreds of inmates at Paderai, including hardened criminals and political captives. They were subjected to brutal KGB interrogations and abuse, and many were executed. The prison was abandoned in 2004 when Estonia joined the European Union. It's open to the public as a museum, but very little has been done to preserve or restore the site. Visitors see Paderai precisely as it was left, along with the effects of time and the elements. Some cells still contain books, magazines, and other personal belongings left behind by prisoners. Estonian-Canadian sisters Lisa and Kristen Dobbin visited Paderai Prison during a quest to learn more about their ancestral heritage. They likened the facility to the setting of a Stanley Kubrick film, describing it in a blog for Estonian World as a dark psychological thriller about loneliness and lives misspent. The sisters also reported feeling overwhelmed with dread and anxiety during their tour. One of Paderai Prison's most disturbing features is its operating room, which carries a distinctive unpleasant odor and still contains an old bedpan, glass bottles that once held medical fluids, and obsolete equipment. Number 7. Jayamana Located in Romania's Apuseni Mountains, the Rosia Poeni mine was once Europe's second largest copper mine, employing around 500 people at its peak. It was established during the first half of the 20th century after copper deposits were discovered nearby the village of Jayamana. Nearby residents' lives were turned upside down in 1977 when representatives of the then-dictator Nicolae Sosescu showed up and told them they had to pack up and leave. Engineers needed somewhere to dump toxic wastewater from the copper mine and Jayamana was chosen as the place for it. Villagers were offered $2,000 for their properties and were told that they would be moving to a town close by. But the government failed to keep most of its promises and between 300 and 400 families were scattered throughout the country. Authorities also failed to move the graves of Jayamana's deceased residents as promised. The village was replaced with an artificial lake filled with hazardous sludge and runoff from Rosia Poeni. It contains dangerous chemicals including cyanide and other substances which have turned the water a bright red color. The only visible remnant of Jayamana is a church spire that juts out eerily from the lake's surface. Number 6. The Capuchin Crypt From the outside looking in, the Santa Maria della Concezione de Cappuccini, or Our Lady of the Conception of the Capuchins, looks pretty ordinary. But beneath the historical chapel in Rome, Italy, there's a series of crypts with the skeletal remains of over 4,000 friars covering the walls and ceilings. Some of the bones are arranged into patterns that are thought to have some sort of religious significance, while other skeletons are dressed in traditional Franciscan attire. The church was commissioned in 1626 by Pope Urban VIII and was completed in 1631. That same year, a member of the Capuchin Order named Cardinal Antonio Barberini ordered for the remains of thousands of friars to be exhumed from their original resting places and moved to the church's crypt. Experts have dated the bones to a nearly 400-year period from 1500 to 1870. There are five chapels in the crypt, and they rely exclusively on a very limited supply of natural light, effectively adding to the site's eeriness. Several noteworthy historical figures have visited, including the Marquis de Sade and Mark Twain. It's also said that the crypt inspired other famous skeleton-covered sites throughout the world, including the Sedlec Ossuary in the Czech Republic and the Skull Chapel in Poland. If you visited this crypt, who would you take with you? Let me know in the comments. Remember to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this one. Number 5. Plymouth the former town of Plymouth once served as the principal port for Montserrat, a British overseas territory located in the West Indies. It sat in the island shadow of the Soufriere Hills volcano, which was dormant for centuries before it suddenly erupted again in 1995. Plymouth was quickly buried in mud and ash, earning it the nickname Pompeii of the Caribbean. The eruption killed at least 19 people and destroyed the island's major airport as authorities rushed to evacuate around 4,000 civilians. Today, Plymouth remains encased chiefly in ash. Partially buried buildings and cars still line the streets that many people had known their entire lives. This was before they had to leave one day with almost no warning and start over elsewhere. There's very little grass or vegetation, giving the ghost town an eerie post-apocalyptic feel. 
It's easy to tell just by looking around that something terrible and unexpected happened there. Some parts of Plymouth were damaged worse than others. For example, the only remaining visible remnants of a neighborhood called Amersham are the tops of the only two buildings that weren't completely buried. When pyroclastic flows barreled through the streets, everything was left in ruins. But even in the less damaged settlements, the electrical and plumbing infrastructures were utterly destroyed, leaving the entire area uninhabitable. The disaster triggered a mass exodus. About two-thirds of Montserrat's residents ended up leaving and never returned, and by 1997 its total population had dwindled to fewer than 1,200. In addition, the island's economy was hard hit, mainly because Plymouth was its largest city and tourist attraction. Volcanic activity has quieted dramatically in recent years but still continues. As a result, Plymouth and several other abandoned towns are surrounded by an exclusion zone where nobody's allowed to live and almost nobody is allowed to visit. A new port and settlement are being built in the northwest section of the small island which measures just 10 miles long and 7 miles wide. But spending the money to build a city as big as Plymouth is unrealistic, and it's unlikely that Montserrat will be restored to its former glory. Number 4. Memorial Mound Clyde Booth was a gravedigger who dreamed of providing the public with a unique alternative to traditional burials. He turned this vision into a reality in 1992 when he opened an underground mausoleum in Bessemer, Alabama called Memorial Mound. The unconventional resting place sat eight feet below the ground, built into a hill. It had a visitor's area that contained a chapel and a computer that visitors could use to view pictures and videos of their loved ones. It also had a marble wall where people left items in memory of the deceased who were laid to rest there. Behind the marble wall, there was a warehouse-like room filled with metal racks for holding caskets. In this area, which was off-limits to the public, coffins were stacked up to 10 feet high. The lower slots came at a much higher cost than those near the top. Booth's unique idea didn't attract as many customers as he thought it would, and only a handful of these spaces were ever filled. So he closed Memorial Mound in 1996 after selling less than a dozen burials over a four-year period. Relatives were allowed to continue visiting the mausoleum until 2000, when the building permanently closed its doors. The site soon fell into a sad state of decay. Vandals looted it for scrap metal and left it in disarray, while curious urban explorers broke in to have their own look around. Photos of the dilapidated property that surfaced in 2014 showed broken glass, embalming supplies, display caskets, and decaying skeletal human remains, including at least one body and an open coffin. Authorities had known about the building's neglected state for a while, but the images finally prompted them to act. They increased security measures at the property and took the remains of seven people to the local coroner's office so surviving family members could make final arrangements. Sadly, some of the graves had been ransacked by then, and someone even took a human skull as a morbid memento of their trespassing adventure into the mausoleum. Number 3. Port Arthur Port Arthur opened in 1830 as a timber station on the Australian island of Tasmania. It was turned into a prison in 1853 when Britain began sending its most hardened criminals there. Those who re-offended after their first conviction or who proved too difficult to handle in a traditional jail ended up at Port Arthur, where boys as young as nine years old were sent. The prison had some of the highest security measures in the British penal system and was deemed inescapable. Instead of physically punishing prisoners, which was standard at other institutions, the guards at Port Arthur psychologically tortured the inmates. Prisoners were kept as isolated from one another as possible. They were forced to wear hoods over their faces to keep them silent, and they were cut off entirely from any form of meaningful human contact. This hardline experimental policy known as separate prison system was supposedly designed to give inmates an opportunity to reflect on the behavior that landed them behind bars. But the sensory deprivation and solitude did more harm than good, taking a severe psychological toll and causing many prisoners to go crazy. The disturbing daily occurrences at Port Arthur were brought to light during a penal reform movement and in 1877 the prison was abandoned. Several of the property's decaying buildings were auctioned off and people didn't seem to mind seeing these remnants of a dark and shameful chapter in history get erased. Eager to rebrand the area's reputation, locals established an entirely new town. But curious visitors continued to visit the ruins and activists campaigned to preserve what's left of the site. Port Arthur fell under government management during the 1970s. It became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2010, ensuring that the inhumane suffering that went on at the prison will never be forgotten. Number 2. Takakanuma Greenland Amusement Park Japan's Fukushima Prefecture is primarily known throughout the world as the site of a catastrophic nuclear accident that happened at a power plant in 2011. But it's also home to an obscure abandoned amusement park called Takakanuma Greenland. It's tucked into a rural mountainous area outside the city of Hobara and is allegedly impossible to find on any map or GPS. 
The park opened in 1973 and closed just two years later. Ticket sales were low and the owners claimed they planned to renovate, hoping to attract more visitors. On the other hand, locals claimed that Takakanuma Greenland closed because multiple people died on the rides. It reopened in 1986 but struggled to compete with newer and bigger amusement parks like Tokyo Disneyland. The park closed for good in 1999 and its rides and attractions were simply left to rot. Urban explorers have captured photos of the heavily rusted and overgrown Ferris wheel, roller coaster and other rides along with the park's graffiti-covered entrance. Some claim that the site's disturbing history is exaggerated and that a lot of information has gotten lost in translation because of cultural misunderstandings and language barriers. But if you ask others, the tragic stories about what may or may not have happened at Takakanuma Greenland only add to the eeriness of the secluded ruins. Number 1. Odessa Catacombs Beneath the streets of Odessa, Ukraine, there's a 1,600-mile-long network of tunnels known as the Odessa Catacombs. There are over 1,000 entrances to the system which date back to the late 18th century. The catacombs originally functioned as underground stone mines for harvesting coquina, a sedimentary rock that was commonly used as building material in the growing city. They span three levels and consist of caves, tunnels, and abandoned quarries, which are not all connected. Odessa experienced a huge commerce boom from 1819 to 1859. At the time, mining activities were largely unregulated, allowing prospectors to dig into the ground on a whim, hoping to secure a fortune. It eventually became so problematic that mining was banned in central Odessa after the Russian Revolution in 1917. During World War II, the tunnels were used for hiding Soviet partisans. Different historical chapters are revealed in various parts of the complex. One part, known as the Wild Area, features inscriptions, symbols, paintings, and graffiti of unknown origins and meanings. Decaying human remains have also been found within the network, which continues to expand in parts of Odessa where mining is still allowed. Thanks for watching. Which of these scary places would you most like to visit? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. How about a thumbs up while you're here so we know you want to see more videos like this? Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.